Well, here it is Friday, time for our STEM Ambassador of the Week, and we always shine the spotlight on women and girls doing great things in STEM. And tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Cindy Brown, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Innovum. Now, Innovum is not a Northeast Ohio company. No, it's not. But you do stuff here yes. in Northeast Ohio. What, what is Innovum? Innovum, we're a woman-owned small business. We're based out of Greenbelt, Maryland, and we're a science and technology company. And right now, our primary customers are NOAA and NASA. We have a little bit of DOD work. And I'm here in the Cleveland area because I'm trying to grow our footprint at uh, Glenn Research Center. So what kinds of, uh, uh, I guess, projects do you work on? We are we do a lot in the data arena, so a lot of data analytics, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of it is dealing with right now data that comes off of satellites. Oh wow! Primarily weather satellites. You have my attention. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so we we have a lot of really smart folks that work in the company, and they do the, the processing of the data when it comes off the satellite. A lot of it is uh, some calibration, validation of the data, but it's all taking the data and looking at it from different aspects and trying to um, solve a lot of problems using that data. Well, and it's been really interesting because recently, you know, the Go satellites yes. went up 16 and 17 yep. they kind of revolutionized weather visibility from space yes. and they have so much data that yep. literally the problem was how do we house all this data and that's a big problem across all the weather satellites so JPSS is another weather satellite mm -hmm. and they are collecting collecting the data is not the problem it's getting the data and doing the analysis on the data and figuring out what's important and what's not and doing it in a timely manner it's it's weather data right so you have need to it Quickly. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes it's moment by moment yep. life saving stuff that yes, we're talking is. about here. All right, so you have a degree in computer science yes. and statistics. Yes. How challenging was that? Did you have a lot of other women in your classes? Nope. nope. <laughs> really? Um, for the most part, initially, I was one of the few women. Um, I don't even know if I want to tell you how long ago it was when I went to college, <laughs> but we were, I was actually a guinea pig in the program in uh, George Washington University. Uh, we were just starting a computer science program. Wow. So they were figuring it out as we were going along and basically trying things and seeing how it worked, but primarily men. Um, eventually there were a few other women that came in at the tail end of it, but um, even to this day, unfortunately, it seems to be more men than women. Well, what was your most challenging class? Calculus? Really? Yes. Advanced yeah, calculus. The computer science and statistics, but it's calculus. You got it. Yes, yes, no it kidding. Is. And then what was the class that just grabbed you and you were like, this is it? Um, programming. Um, yeah. Doing the whole logic of taking a problem and turning it into something that you could solve with code. And it was fun. And a lot of girls are getting interested in coding. Yes, they are. Yes, what is it are. about it that you think really gravitates towards girls' skill sets? Um, logical thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it is just breaking something down into a smaller problems and then applying some logic to it to, to figure out how to solve the problem. Well, it is a fascinating field to be in. And if you have a young girl who is interested in computer science, two thumbs up because yes. there's a lot of possibilities for them. We have more information on all of our STEM ambassadors, and you can see more of our STEM stories at WKYC.com slash girls in STEM.